Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is the second part on how to build a PC. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to choose your parts on a specific platform. I use websites like PC Part Picker and Cooler Master's Wattage Calculator. Here, I'm going to give one build example, but if you have any suggestions on which parts to use, which, whether it's price or performance, make sure to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. Now, before we begin picking, you have to ask yourself one question. What kind of user are you going to be for this PC? Are you going to be a casual user, which just looks at web browsing, uh, documents, uh, office work? Are you a gamer who wants to game at very high frame rates or high resolutions? Or are you a productivity user who works on 3D rendering or video editing? The core concept is roughly the same for all users, but the parts will be slightly different. Also, you should give yourself a budget so that way you get to know how much you should distribute your money, whether it is for the motherboard, the GPU, or the CPU. Now I'm going to show you how to choose your parts, but the only two that I cannot show you is the CPU and the GPU, mainly because those are very situational and they depend on each user. And also because I don't have the resources, nor do I have benchmarking results to show you guys which one to choose. And also I think it's gonna be a little uh, misleading or it's gonna be too much information to gather all in one video so my advice would be to look up some videos online about benchmarks real-life performance so that way you can get an idea on which CPU or GPU to buy with that out of the way now we could start picking okay so the website I use for building is called PC part picker and what they allow you to do is choose the components for your build while filtering everything that you want so like maybe the size the colors the storage capacities and other things that you can change. Okay, so once you have selected your CPU and your GPU, now it's onto the motherboard. So you go over here where it says choose a motherboard. And the first thing that it's gonna show you is all of the motherboards available on the market right now. So if you're looking for a particular board, you go over here where it says filters, scroll down and just go in order of what you want. So if you know the brands, you can filter out the brands. If you want a specific color, you can choose the color for the aesthetic look, uh, socket, form factor, so like the sizes, chipset, SLI crossfire, which is just multiple GPUs, and so on. Now, when choosing a motherboard, you might want to have it correspond to the CPU that you have. So for example, uh, in this one that right here, this is a second gen Ryzen chip. Now, when you choose a motherboard, you want it to correspond to the CPU that you have. So second gen AMD chips will work with the B450 motherboards. Now, uh, let's see where it is. Uh, oh, here it is. A B350 motherboard works with first gen Ryzen chips. Now they are co backwards compatible. You can put a second gen inside a uh, first gen motherboard. It will work but you have to do some BIOS updates and all that complicated stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube to show you, but just for the CPU to work straight out of the box, you have to make sure that the motherboard matches with the CPU. Now, some motherboards will state that they have all the bells and whistles, but you wanna make sure that it has all the features that you would like. So, for example, uh, so there's this affordable one right here. It's a good motherboard, just that it doesn't have that many features. There's no wireless Wi-Fi. There's no Bluetooth. It's just a very basic motherboard. It's a good motherboard. It's just very basic. Now, compared to whew, the more expensive ones over here, it's got all of the things you want. So like, uh, I think that's USB-C. Yeah, USB-C, wireless, display port. Um, it's called... USB 3.1, I think that's Gen 2. Basically, all of the things that you want. It will be listed on the side over here where it says specifications. Now, you would just have to look for each each one by one and see which one is the one that you would like. Okay, so once you have selected your motherboard, now it's onto the RAM. Now, the RAM will depend very heavily on what type of motherboard that you have. So basically, how many gigabytes you'll be able to take how many RAM sticks actually physically fit, and also what's the speed. So in order to check for that, you would go to choose memory, 
so go on it like regularly and then you want to make sure this is enabled enable compatibility filter what it's going to do it's going to filter out every single ram company size speed everything according to your motherboard now you can scroll here all you want choose which one you want but if you want to like just double check in case you're not using this website you would go here the motherboard that you selected scroll down a bit and then right over here where it says memory slots and memory type and the maximum supported memory all of these three oops all of these three categories is what you'll use to choose which type of ram that you want in case you're not shopping on this uh, website okay so next up is the storage and this one's actually pretty easy to understand since there's only a few things to consider so when you pick your storage you go over here choose a storage and same thing like the other parts you're going to go on the uh, filter section right here you're gonna choose your brands the size the type uh, the form factor and so on now when you start choosing which one you should get, I always like to separate what kind of use case do I have. So for casual users, uh, I would suggest just going with an SSD. So just hit SSD and pretty much choose what is best for you. Now, if you're someone who is a gamer or someone who does productivity, I would recommend getting an SSD and also a hard drive. Now, why the hard drive? So for your SSD, I suggest making that as your bootable drive, so basically where Windows is at, where all of your main uh, files are located, and your hard drive can be used to put large bulks of data, so all your videos, your content, all your games, so that way it doesn't clog up the SSD too much. And also because SSDs in large capacities, they're quite expensive, compared to hard drives, not so much. Another thing to keep in mind is the form factor because typically 2.5 inch is for SSDs and 3.5 inch is for hard drives. Now there are hard drives at 2.5 inch which I recommend avoiding because that much space cramped into a 2.5 inch form factor not only is it going to be a little bit more pricier but also the longevity of your drive is actually shortened because it's just it's just too small there's not enough room to actually work with so I would recommend staying away from 2.5 inch hard drives and just stick with SSDs as 2.5 inch and hard drives as 3.5 inch. All right, next up is the power supply. And this one's actually pretty easy to learn because there's only two main factors that you have to consider. How many watts and the size. So over here, we're gonna go to choose a power supply. And same thing like the other components, you get to mess around with the filter, choose whatever you like. But the two main ones that you wanna focus is the wattage and the type, which is basically what size it is. Starting with the wattage, if you want a good approximation on how many watts your entire system is gonna pull, you would have to go to the top, over here where it says view your system build, you'll click that. Then over here, you're going to see an approximation on how many watts your entire system is going to pull. Now, this is a very low number, by the way. And I, I would never suggest you getting a power supply that is close to this number because this is just an approximation. Now, your bill can pull a lot more electricity on, on different scenarios. So if it's gaming, rendering something, and etc. I would get a much larger power supply. Now, I've personally worked with this card, and with a 400 watt power supply, it actually turned off on its own because there was voltage regulations. Now, I've upgraded it to a, I think it was a 500 or a 550 power supply, and it works perfectly fine. So, the key is that do not get a power supply that is too low, or else your build um, is going to have some voltage regulations and probably just turn off on its own. But neither do you want to get a really large power supply because, I mean, nothing happens to your components. It's just that your wall outlet is going to pull so much electricity and it's not going to distribute it to any of your components because it's not consuming that much. So if you want a good approximation, there's this uh, calculator from Cooler Master called the, I think it's called the wattage calculator. So Cooler Master wattage calculator. Later. This is embarrassing typing speed. <laughs> so yeah, power supply calculator. 
from Cooler Master, and here they're going to ask you several questions. Uh, actually, not several, quite a lot of questions <laughs> on what your uh, build has. So from the motherboard, CPU, even all the way to the keyboard and mouse, it's going to ask all these questions, and then it's going to give you an approximation and even a suggestion on what type of power supply you should get, the size and the wattage number. Now, you can mess around with this or look on YouTube, different examples of different builds. Now, I don't have all the power supplies in the world, uh, and uh, neither do I have all the graphics cards in the world, so I'm sure you can look up online some examples like with what types of power supplies and so on. Now, as for the size, it will depend very much on your case. Now, concerning that who the target audience of my video is, I'm sure many of you are going to choose a pretty uh, pretty standard build, like an ATX build. So the only two major ones that you have to worry about is ATX and SFX, which is what I covered in my previous video. ATX is the, well, the standard size for most power supplies. It will fit in most cases. An SFX power supply will fit in the very small compact cases meant for like uh, enthusiast builds. So I would pretty much just focus with ATX and from there you could just mess around what wattage you want, the ratings, the pricing, and so on. Now that you have gathered all of your components, now it's time to choose the case. So you go over here, choose the case. Now you're gonna see a lot of options to choose from. There's really no right or wrong. It's pretty much just up to you what you want, like what brand, what color, if it has RGB lighting or not. But one way to actually narrow down your results is to correspond the case with your motherboard. So to find out, you would go to your build. You see this keyword right here, micro ATX? You would apply that to the case. So you would go here and you would select micro ATX for the case. Now obviously everyone's motherboard will be different. If you have an ATX motherboard, likely you should choose an ATX sized uh, case. But if you have a micro ATX motherboard, it's much more recommended to get a micro ATX size case because it wouldn't make sense that you have a small motherboard and place it inside a giant full tower ATX size case. It just simply wouldn't make sense. And also it would cost a lot more to actually pay for one of these because of materials and features. Just a few more things to add on, just little things, is to keep looking down here on your filters. You might wanna pay attention to all of these because it will help you out filtering out the cases that you want and you don't want. So in this example right here, power supply, all yes and no. On our build, we actually have our own power supply, so you might want to check that off as no, because we already have our own power supply. This one's up to you if you want a side panel on your on your case, USB 3, the form factors it supports, and all the bays that you would need. Another thing to keep in mind is your expectations for the price. So just for comparison here, uh, I'll get this uh, cheap Rosewell case as well as, uh, let's go with the NZXT one. So the Rosewell case, at $20, this is what you get. Now there's no side panel, there's no RGB lighting, there's no clean uh, cable management. It's pretty, I mean, you're, you are getting what you're paying for. Compared to this one, at $150, ooh, this one actually looks pretty good. It's got a clear glass side panel. You could show off your uh, SSD. It actually hides the cables. Pretty well made, good materials being used here. Now, of course, that's $150. You are paying for that premium. So, one thing that I could just say is that just keep your, just keep your expectations to what the price suggests. Now that you have all of your parts assembled, now it's just to check the price. Now, at the bottom of the website, it's gonna give you a total. Now, if your budget is below this number right here, the total, you are probably overspending on something. Now, it wouldn't hurt to just double check all of your parts to see if you're not overspending on something, whether it is just for an aesthetic feature, a size difference, and even just generally even something that you might not even use. So just double check your components and make sure you make the right decision accordingly to fit your budget. Now, if your total is below your budget, well, I, all I could say is congrats, you made a build that is 
well, aligned with your budget. <laughs> but it still wouldn't uh, hurt to just double check your components to make sure that you're spending correctly. Now, even if you're ready to buy all of this stuff, it wouldn't hurt to just check each component one by one to see that you're buying at the right time. So, for example, uh, let's see, the, let's, choose, let's choose the case. You can do this with any of the parts. Over here, you're gonna see a prices list, and it's gonna separate every retailer from the cheapest to the most expensive. Now, seeing here, it says that Amazon is at $55.59. Now, this is a pretty good price, I would say. However, just because it's the cheapest on the top of the list does not mean it's the right time to buy it. And what do I mean by that? So, well, you should scroll down a little bit, and you'll see a price history tab. This basically shows you all the times that it has gone down, gone up from a certain timeline. So I would just experiment with this, like start looking around, see when it was the cheapest, when it was the most expensive. So that way you get an idea when to buy it at the right time. Because just because this is the cheapest price right now, doesn't mean that it's the right time to buy it. Now you could do this with any bill, just make sure to check that you are purchasing it at the right time. And that is it for this video guys. That is for part two of how to build a PC. I really do hope that the tools I provided are easy to understand so you can mess around, so you can choose your parts for price, performance, colors, and so on. Part three, I'm going to be showing you guys how to physically build your PC so that way you can get it up and running. Stay tuned for that and make sure to hit the bell icon as well as the subscribe button so that way you can see more future content like this down the road. Anyways guys, thank you for watching. See you guys next time.